helping protect your... ...100 million people starving. And the world producing more food than ever before. We're living in a time of sort of profound and distressing contradiction. If you, if you imagine the chain of production of food from farm to fork, there are hundreds of millions of farmers and billions of consumers, but only a few uh, companies in between. The, if you, so it's sort of like an hourglass figure. Uh, there, there's, at, at the waist of that hourglass, there's um, a handful of corporations that are in the business of trucking and bartering that, you know, the food backwards and forwards. Um, and they operate by the cardinal rule of the market, and that is to buy cheap and sell dear. So they buy cheap from farmers, and they sell us food that is highly processed and uh, sort of profit-intensive for them. So, in Stuffed and Starved, Raj Patel describes how nearly half the world's food trade is controlled by a small number of big names, like Nestle, Unilever and Coca-Cola, and how throughout the West, supermarkets largely control supply and distribution. Patel says that does two things. It screws down prices for third world farmers and leaves us gorging on processed foods. Our bodies crave sugar and salt and fat. You know, we, we're sort of hardwired to, to want these things. Um, food companies know this, uh, and this is why you'll find those three things in, in quite a lot of food that is sold on supermarket shelves. Now, the, the response is, well, you can also buy diet food. Um, and, and I think that, that, that that's very ironic. I mean, you, the, the, one of the largest companies in the world, Unilever, um, owns Ben and Jerry's ice cream, which is a very, very successful uh, kind of ice cream in America. Uh, but they also own Slim Fast. Um, and, it, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a weird irony that, that obviously a company that's selling you fat is also selling you thin. Um, but that, you know, the, the, that just sort of points to the fact that um, companies are not necessarily evil, but they're just in it to follow the rules of the market. A lot of people would say that obesity is the result of personal choices, personal bad choices. It is, but now, he, I mean, he, he, here's an interesting f fact, that for every dollar that is spent promoting food that is good for you, $500 is spent promoting food that's junk food. Now, if, 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 if we're trying, I mean, if, you know, if, as parents, for example, if, if, if we're trying to feed our kids properly and actually get them to eat the right things, those are steep odds. It doesn't seem fair that, that, that actually um, our sort of faculties of choice are being held hostage by the, the people who are able to, to, to sort of buy, buy the most airtime. So rather than being temples of choice, supermarkets offer lots of the same in different packaging. As consumers, we think we're free agents, but add marketing to limited choice, and we're really being driven towards what the supermarkets want us to buy. At, at the end of the day, we are the people who, who put, put food in our mouths. Um, but a lot of that actually isn't chosen. Um, and a, a lot of money is spent uh, on working up the opposite of choice, which is instinct. That's why, for example, um, milk is always at the back of supermarkets. We're in supermarkets most often for milk, and so we're encouraged to go the long way around to get to it and to, to, to impulse purchase along the way. Raj Patel accepts you can't blame business for doing what it's set up to do, make a profit. But all the same, his recipe for a modern global diet is to stay out of supermarkets. Instead, do what your parents used to do, shop at the local butcher and greengrocer, and the new trend, farmer's markets. If we're concerned about health uh, and if we're concerned about um, the environment, then we, we would do well to, to, to better understand how things are produced. And supermarkets are not good at catering to that to some extent. I mean, sure, that there's more organic on the, on the shelves now than there used to be, and you can find fair trade. But actually, if, if you go to farmer's markets, you're in far more direct contact with the people who grow your food um, and far more able to actually ask questions like, well, where does it come from? How healthy is this? What's, you know, what else is in it except what, what you're selling me? Thank <sighs> you.